Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another session of Toward a Quality of Life on this uh, Friday evening in December, December, December 7th of uh, 2001. And with me tonight is Professor Ernest Moniz from MIT. He is a professor of physics and in particular a professor of nuclear physics. And uh, prior to the current uh, year, he was associate director of the White House Office of Science and Technology Policy in 1995 through 97, and undersecretary of the Department of Energy from 97 to 2001. Uh, Dr. Moniz has been a professor at MIT as well since 1973. I invited Dr. Moniz uh, tonight to talk about radiation, radioactive energy, uh, nuclear power, and everything like that. And the reason being that we hear about uh, the potential for dirty bombs which involve radioactive power. We hear about nuclear power plants and whether we should or shouldn't have them. We hear that nuclear power is very dangerous to our health. Uh, I, for many times, have said that myself. Uh, and so I want us to understand at the very basics what radiation is, what energy is, what it is we're talking about here because I'm sure most of us really don't understand what it is we're dealing with when we talk about radiation and, and maybe we could start with what is energy or what are these waves of, of, of power or energy or if you have another place to start that's very elementary to explain how we get to radiation. Well, let's start with, with energy, because uh, energy clearly is the, is the point of having a nuclear power plant, uh, and energy uh, is truly the lifeblood of, of our society, of, uh, whether it's uh, at work or, or at home. But may I say this, rather than talk about energy as uh, something we use, just energy yes. as a, in, in terms of physics, that, that, yes. that, that life has energy, and what, what is energy, physically speaking? Yes, I was just saying that okay. w w why we need to address this, this issue, of course, is because it is the lifeblood of our, uh, uh, of our activities. Now, we produce energy uh, in a variety of ways. In all cases, we are, in one way or another, taking energy that has been stored in nature and converting it to work for our purposes. We do that in several ways. Of course, most of our energy is, it comes from, from burning fossil fuels, and that's, that's chemistry. That's combining hydrogen in coal or in natural gas or in oil with oxygen, having combustion, you get heat, and that's the energy. And you, you convert that, uh, let's say, in a, in, a, in a power plant to electricity or in your, or in your internal combustion engine to uh, energy to drive, drive your car. Another major source of energy, uh, developing source of energy, is so-called renewable energy. Let's say solar cells. That's taking energy in the light coming from the sun and converting it through a physical process in a semiconductor into electricity. That's another form of conversion of energy. And is and that finally, because the solar power is heat? Is it heat that's making the energy? Uh, no, it's not heat. It's, it's, it's not really, heat. It's really, uh, it's, it's light, and light carries energy. And that energy is converted in this material from light into an electron. And that electron is electricity, which comes into your house and powers your lights, etc. Okay, and in the former kind of fossil fuel energy you talked about, how does the heat become energy, or become energy that we can use? What is it typically, physically? Typically, for example, uh, you would use the heat then to, uh, let's say, create steam. Boil water, you create steam. The steam makes pressure, and that pressure drives a turbine, for example. That's one, that's one example of converting the heat into a physical mechanical motion. And you drive that turbine, the turbine makes electricity, and it goes shooting to your house uh, over the Okay, over and with water. solar energy, it's light. It's direct conversion of the light into electricity in a material. It is not, it is not a chemical process. Well, as, as, and the as other is a chemical fossil. process. Exactly. Okay. Now, and then the last major source uh, of energy uh, is nuclear. Uh, in nuclear, the energy is stored in nature in the following way. Very heavy elements in nature way beyond iron. And what is an element? So an element is uh, uh, 
an entity, <laughs> uh, like carbon, oxygen, magnesium, iron, uh, that uh, is the basic building block uh, of matter. Uh, physically, it's composed of electrons uh, that govern the chemistry going around a nucleus. Those electrons, which is a unique structure for every element, is what controls how the atoms interact with each other. That's, that's what chemistry is, okay? What are the atoms? Uh, the atoms uh, are the, again, the basic building blocks of, of matter. Uh, the, low, the most elementary one is hydrogen, and then helium, lithium, etc. Uh, as I say, they are really the packages of where, where you have an atomic nucleus which is very, very small, by the way, I, I should say. In, in cannot be size. seen without... Cannot be seen. And can never be seen, actually, as with our physics. In, that's right. in, uh, in terms of, um, of centimeters, mm -hmm. it's, uh, a, it's about 12 zeros with a one at the end. Mm -hmm. okay? mm -hmm. it's, uh, so infinitely small for our purpose. A millionth of a millionth of a centimeter. Uh -huh. Very, very tiny. Do they really exist the way we postulate, or is it just a theory? Oh, no, no, it's uh, They exist the way we, it's proven. Absolutely okay. uh, uh, clear, uh, that, that's, that's correct. The, that nucleus has around it these electrons, which balance off the electric charge. That's why, that's, that's the balance. Each of those units, if it's one electron, or two electrons, or three electrons, that each of that defines a different element, and the atoms are the constituents of that, of that element. The, uh, if you go to very, very heavy elements... Meaning they actually weigh a lot, or is it just... Yes, they, they actually they, they have a much larger mass. Uh, hydrogen, the lightest one, has one proton and one electron. Uranium-235, like uranium, let me say uranium, which is the heaviest naturally occurring element, has the mass of 235 times the hydrogen uh, atom, roughly speaking. Uh, so it's a very, very heavy uh, element. It's so heavy that it really is not a stable element. That is, it has a lifetime that's very, very long, many billions of years, but it's actually not quite stable. And that is what tells you that it has some extra energy that you could extract. And that's, that's what happens in a, in a nuclear chain reaction. Specifically, if you, roughly speaking, tickle the uranium, the right uranium nucleus uh, with another particle, so-called so neutron. What you do is you split the uranium. That's the famous fission process. You split it, it gives up energy, and it also makes more of those neutrons I mentioned. If one of those neutrons now goes on and tickles another uranium nucleus and splits it, more energy is produced, more neutrons are produced, that's the chain reaction. Mm -hmm. This can go on and on and on. Because that neutron is full of energy or? No, it is not the neutron, it is the uranium that is ready to give its energy. The, the uranium nucleus, as I say, it, it has this extra energy. And over a very, very long time period, billions of years, it will eventually release that energy. In a nuclear chain reaction, you're getting it all to happen now. By having, again, it's, the, the chain is, a neutron comes in, tickles this uranium, falls apart, into two other elements, lighter elements, releasing energy, but also making in the same process more neutrons, typically let's say two to three more neutrons. So if those neutrons go on and make additional fissionings, that's the chain reaction. You can keep making, in principle, go on and on and on. More neutrons, make more fissions, make more neutrons, make more fissions. And what kind of energy is released? In the end, it's basically heat. So in the end, once you get past the release of the energy through this nuclear fission, as compared to 
let's say, combustion of coal or natural gas. From that point on, it's basically the same. You heat water, you make steam, you use the steam to, to, uh, to uh, drive a turbine. What are the how, how what are the physical machine characteristics that are, that are used to make this happen? Is, I mean, how how do you work with the uranium to make the fission? Well, the core uh, the key issue is that first of all, uh, there is a, a very difficult process, uh, an expensive process, in which you must single atoms of uranium you want to use. You don't use the same mixture you find in nature. So there's a so-called enrichment process. Then you form that into rods, long thin rods, which hold the uh, uranium. These are, must be cooled as all the heat is released during fission. And in fact, that's where the energy is being carried off in the water. The water They're cooled cooling. by water? Are uh, they actually typically, touched by typically the water? Typically by water. The, the uranium itself is not. The uranium is, is in a, is in a, uh, a metal rod, uh, but it's, it's cooled by water, and that, and that water is then carrying away the heat, and that's the heat ultimately. That you okay, need. is the water really cold? when it, No, it's, it's not because it wants to take away the heat, but it's got to cool it. Well, what temperature is the water when it's... Well, the, the water... Uh, to when begin it's, with. When it's, when it's going in. Regular. Let's say it's normal. normal sort of normal. Okay, basically, basically because you want it to take away the heat. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, but, but eventually, then, but then it, then it will get much hotter. Mm -hmm. uh, you make steam, you, you condense it back in, cool it, and put it back through the, uh, through the uh, reactor. Okay, now... Um, I've heard that sometimes water of, of lakes or the ocean, am I right in this, could be, could be used to circulate around um, yes, uh, fission? Yes. Often, often the uh, uh, water, as you mentioned, is used as the cooling water. So, so water that's nearby, for example, a power plant could be, yes. could be directed to do that? Yes. How many gallons, are we talking a big amount of water? Well, it's a substantial amount of water, mm. but not not substantial on the scale of a of a lake or an ocean. Uh -huh. So it's a it's a. It's and it never returns it back to where it's taken from uh, the water. No, and then then the water is is often recirculated, and in fact, those are some of the issues one has heard uh, environmental concerns raised in terms of certainly warmer water than was taken out being placed back into the reservoir. Exactly. Now, it, some and sometimes that's not done. Sometimes it is. Sometimes it isn't. Other times. Uh, you've seen these big cooling towers with, with steam, uh, apparently, with vapor coming out. Really? I've yes. never seen that. And that's, I, and, I never uh, try to look too closely. And that's, uh, uh, so that, that's, that's, that's another way of, of, of the cooling process. Really? Yes. So when the steam is coming out, presumably all the radioactive um, energy and is not part of that? Correct. This, this is, this, this is a, an entirely separate water loop. Mm -hmm. uh, which, in principle, should never come in contact with any radioactive uh, material. Uh, the, and the fact is that... Oh, so it's presumably protected from it by correct. whatever it's shielded right. with. I That's see. Right. Uh -huh. and the, uh, but it comes and out too warm sometimes for the well, environment. Well, the, the water is yeah, certainly exactly. warmed. Yeah. Uh, but the, uh, the fact is that uh, very little radiation uh, has been emitted by... Uh, by nuclear power plants, of course, with the exception of, say, Chernobyl, which was clearly a disaster of a major magnitude. Uh, I should mention that the Chernobyl design is a very primitive uh, Soviet design that would never be licensed uh, in, in the West. Uh, but, uh, but apart from that kind of a catastrophic accident, uh, by and large, there's been very, very little uh, radiation uh, released. And when I say very little, it's perhaps worth understanding that uh, we live in an, um, in, a, in, in an ambient radiation environment. We have radiation coming from the skies. We have radiation coming from walls and buildings. We have radiation literally inside our bodies from food we eat. Uh, the, there is a, a, a measure of that, but let me just say that the uh, releases from nuclear power plants are, uh, are many, many, many orders of magnitude below those levels that we experience uh, every there day. There are releases from nuclear power plants? There are m m very, very small uh, amounts. Uh, in particular, 
uh, a noble gas um, uh, called krypton uh, and uh, some tritium uh, often is, is released but again they are they satisfy a very very stringent uh, like in standards. steam is that how they leave or uh, some some could uh, mm -hmm. get, out, get out that way yes. how else do they well, that would, in the, that would be a principal way for principal tritium. Uh -huh. uh, krypton is as a so-called noble gas, uh, just kind of just, just would just vent into the atmosphere typically. Okay. Now, um, you said that the uh, the fissioned uranium um, has ends up being very hot, and then that heat is transferred through water out out. That's the energy. But mm -hmm. what part of this is the radioactive energy that is the rays measured in REMS? Which part of that is the radioactive energy? Where does that fit in? Well, the, um, first of all, maybe we should discuss radiation. Okay. What, what radiation is, fundamentally, is the <clears throat> emission of various particles. Uh, it can be x-rays. It can be... Uh, electrons, uh, or it can be relatively small nuclei themselves, like the, the nuclei of helium. But what radiation is, fundamentally, is a process that changes nuclei one into the other. And it's all around us. Radium painted dials, that's radiation, um, uh, for example. Where are radium painted dials? I'm not familiar with that. Is that from before? Do they still have radium painted dials? Uh, you may still find uh, a little bit. Something but, but from the past? Before, before the, the things that glow in exactly, the dark? Exactly, the glow in uh -huh. the dark. Mm -hmm. uh, there are many uh, ex exit signs uh, today which have small amounts of tritium in them. Oh, really? Which is, mm -hmm. And it's because of the mm -hmm. radioactivity uh, that, uh, that they work. So this is a phenomenon certainly all, uh, all around us. Uh, and obviously all around us, in, especially in hospitals, where it is a very important uh, uh, diagnostic and therapeutic, uh, uh, of course, uh, approach. Uh, but having said that, now going back to the question of the radiation in, in the fission, uh, the, as I mentioned, the fission results in the breakup of this uranium nucleus, let's say, into two smaller pieces, typically. Those smaller pieces uh, are not the pieces that nature likes. And the way they become the pieces that nature likes is through radiation, by emitting enough particles until they finally become what nature likes. Stable? Stable. So that's what the radiation is. And that is the so-called nuclear waste. It's these pieces that have come from the uranium breaking up in two. And they are, they, they are, they produce a lot of heat in, in the usual sense, and they also are very hot in the radioactive sense. And the, the, the difficult challenge of nuclear waste is in fact that that waste remains radioactive and hot as well for a very, very long period of time. And so the challenge is can scientists devise a way and appropriately convince the public that they have devised a way to maintain that material safely out of the biosphere for many, many generations. I mean, it's, 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 it's a generational responsibility you know, in, in effect. Now, if you were standing near uh, very hot uranium, so to speak, hot in the sense that it's highly radioactive, you wouldn't feel anything? You wouldn't notice anything? Let's say there were some right near me now. Would, would, would anything, what well, would happen? The, uh, the uranium itself, uh, typically, uh, let's say natural, naturally occurring uranium, uh, or the uranium that's used in, in, uh, in uh, nuclear fuel, uh, is not itself very hot uh, in either uh, in either sense of the word. or radioactivity, uh, correct. And if it were here in a, contained in a box, it would be of basically no, no consequence. Did Marie Skłodowska get can cancer from touching uranium a lot, or am I... Um, I, I don't Marie know... Curie. Marie, oh, Marie Curie. Marie Curie. Yeah, her name uh, was Skłodowska, yeah. I see, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, the, um, she was not working with, with, 
uh, with with, uh, with uranium. She uh, wasn't she radium. Other radium, oh. but uh, but the uh, but certainly uh, handling these materials, uranium, etc., uh, must be done carefully, because for example, if you were in touching them, etc., or in then ingesting them, uh, that would not be a very good idea. They are radio they are radioactive, uh -huh. and uh, they are and, and heavy metals. Uh, they could be attracted to bones, for example, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so if there cancer. If some of this fission material, the 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 the, the what's left, not not the not the heat and but whatever after it's broken after apart, broken if, apart. It, if it were here near me, would it do anything to me? Could yes. I notice it? <clears throat> the uh, excuse me, uh, the um, uh, well, it would certainly be doing a lot to you. Yes. It would be. Yes. Uh, uh, it, it, instantly, uh, would I instantly die? Uh, depends how much of it yeah, know, there was and how close yeah. you were, but uh, conceivably you could have uh, rather debilitating effects in a, mm -hmm. in a short time. Would it start it to burn a, my skin? Uh, I, I don't. I'm not, you don't know. I'm not you a don't know how that works. So I don't okay. know quite uh, how, how rapidly uh, that uh, uh, that would work. But with uh, with spent fuel just coming out of out of a reactor, uh, you need you know remote handling. You need to have very very heavily shielded uh, containers to. Uh, uh, to and protect persons. The shielded material is that still lead, or is it something else? It's uh, typically some some kind of steel. A steel, yeah. very heavy, thick steel. Thick, thick steel, that's right. How right. thick? This thick? No, this thick. This thick. Right. Uh -huh. <laughs> right. But there are different densities of steel, right? So Absolutely. very yes. dense. Yeah. Okay. So the spent fuel is uranium. There are other things that end up being nuclear waste. That's considered a nuclear waste, the spent uranium. The, 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 spent, the, fuel the, the spent fuel following the fission of the uranium, uh, principally. There, there is still uranium in there, but there's also, but again, the, the radioactivity is being caused mostly by the pieces to which the uranium you know, bro broke into. Mm -hmm. okay? uh, <clears throat> to be more precise, those pieces, those those so-called fission products, uh, <clears throat> are the dominant form of radioactivity uh, and heat for a few hundred years. But after that, after a few hundred years, the dominant form is different. Uh, it is actually nuclei heavier than uranium that were created in the reactor, and the most and the the element uh, that is most often discussed in that context is, is plutonium, uh, which uh, which has two more protons than, and uh, plutonium is not present in nature, uh, and it, it is made inside the nuclear reactor core. In fact, <coughs> it's made, and it is also fissioned. Uh, in fact, a substantial, maybe a third of the power coming out of the nuclear typical nuclear reactor is actually from the plutonium that was made in the reactor and then was it was split itself but coming out of the reactor remains significant amount of, of, of plutonium and it and other nuclei of its type uh, actually become the dominant radioactivity for very very long times 10,000 years 100,000 years do you need a lot of some kind of a force to to break the atom to get well, you see, the, see, you would normally, for a, for most atoms, uh, most elements, uh, you would need to deliver quite a bit of energy to break them apart. But this goes back again to why uranium is used in the reactor. It is, it's kind of ready to be broken apart, and so you bring in this neutron of very, very low energy, and it's an, it's enough to sp to split the uh, uh, uranium. Okay. That's what I meant when I said the uranium, in some sense, has this extra energy bound up in it, and it's waiting, <laughs> it's almost waiting to, uh, to uh, give it away. And that's not the most commonly found kind of uranium, or is it? Uh, no, it is not. Uh, it's that's not. correct. Okay. The, the, the part, the, the type that you can break apart easily uh, is less than 1% of the uranium in nature. Where is it found? Where did you get it originally? You have to... Oh, it's in ores or the United States, Deep example. in the ground? Uh, in my, it's mined, yes. In mm -hmm. uh, New Mexico, for example, is a major center of, of uranium mining in the, in the United States. Canada has, uh, has a, 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 a lot of uranium. Um, but earlier when I mentioned uh, that there was a 
an expensive and difficult process uh, in terms of preparing the fuel, it is that in the reactors that we use at least, natural uranium will not work. And so this special uranium, uranium-235 it's called, that is less than 1% in nature, you must raise that to typically, let's say, 4% uh, by separating it out. And that's a, that, that's a, that's a difficult process, but that's what is done to, pre to prepare fuel for our reactors. Okay. Now there's also other, now there's a plutonium resulting from uh, the process. You said there's tritium, krypton, and strontium? What, any? Strontium, absolutely. Uh, so there's almost everything. Is uh, a number the, like twen but, 20? Oh, no, no, no. Many, many more. The, the difference is, I mean, uh, between the ones you mentioned is that tritium, krypton, strontium, uh, and, and, and many others are the smaller pieces I mentioned to which the uranium falls apart, okay? okay? Whereas plutonium is actually bigger than, than uranium. So it's, 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 it's a, it's a diff different process. But of the tritium, krypton, strontium, all those pieces, uh, there are a hundred different, different elements uh, that are produced. Okay. I'm sorry, no, 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 not, not, not different elements. Uh, 50 or 60 different elements. I think. Okay, and they would and they would be called elements. Now, is plutonium called an element? Plutonium is an element. So, so this never was on the element. This never was known as an element till it till it came out of until it was physics. formed. Uh -huh. Until it was formed in in laboratories. Uh, that's right. And now we have a whole sequence of these man-made elements that uh, go even well beyond plutonium. Okay, so now all, but all these elements that, that result from the fissioning process, most of them are man-made, pretty much all of them? No, not. The elements, no, no from- The ones from, that result- From, from fission, uh, no, from, from, from the fission process, uh, all of those pieces are naturally occurring elements. However, they are not the favored form of that element in nature. Uh, and so, See, nature, for any given element, which means a given number of electrons or protons, can have a different number of neutrons. Nature has a preferred value for every element. When they come out of this fission process, they don't come out with that preferred value. The radiation process is, in fact, the process of those pieces trying to get to where they belong in nature. <laughs> and it takes a long time for them to do it. And it goes through a whole series of radiation emissions before they become stable particles. And that's the whole issue of... So it's like unbound energy looking for where it really belongs. Exactly, exactly. It comes out with an energy higher than, than it would like to have in, in a stable configuration. And it gets mm -hmm. there by emitting radiation and changing its character mm -hmm. until it finally becomes a stable particle. So these elements now are produced, and they, are, they would all together be what we call radioactive waste, waste that we have to do exactly. something with. Exactly. Exactly. I want to ask you, why, why do humans have to be so suited up when they work in a nuclear power plant? Well, the, it depends, of course, where they're... Uh, in most parts of a nuclear power plant, they would not be... Uh, they're not so suited up? No, in the control Just something room. you see in but the... But if, if you're going... Well, no, if you're going the near, near the core, mm -hmm. uh, then there will be a radiation background, and one wants to uh, minimize uh, that for, for, the, for the workers, clearly. There is a, uh, there is a uh, stringent uh, uh, dose limit that any worker in the industry can receive. Uh, it is viewed as being a, a safe dose. Um, <clears throat> it is uh, roughly five times the radiation dose that we all get just by walking, walking around, around uh, being in buildings, uh, watching TV. Uh, what, what radiation is coming at us from buildings? Not counting modern technology, but what, 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 what natural so to speak, radiation is coming in a building. Well, these are these are um, uh, elements that you would find in you know granite or so something really? like this, and they would uh, trace amounts. They, no, uh, uh, trace amounts, mm -hmm. trace amounts, and uh, they would. Oh, actually, of course, in in, in a building, the biggest uh, danger that's often been 
uh, been discussed uh, is uh, radon, which comes up from the Earth through the floor uh, and uh, and emits uh, That's an element? Radiation. Is radon, radon an element? Yes, radon is an element. Really? Uh, it, is, uh, it is between lead and uranium. Uh, it's a noble gas and uh, comes into comes into a living what does living noble area. Mean, noble gas? The noble the noble gases, uh, which includes krypton uh, and helium, uh, are gases uh, that are that have particularly weak chemical interactions. So they tend to kind of drift through things quite easily, without having strong interactions. And that's why the radon uh, kind of can come can kind of just diffuse through the ground, through the floor and enter a space, and of course leave it in, 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 the, same, uh, in the same way. Mm, sounds like a ghost. No, well, that's, that's some people might not, have... Not unreasonable, that's right. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Um, okay. Um, what about, even though this... What about the heat in humans? What about the energy in humans? How would you describe that as, com, com, as a type of energy? Well, of course, most most of the most of the energy in, in our in our bodies is produced by by chemical reactions. Um, the uh, but I think for the purposes of our discussion, again, I would note that radiation is present in our bodies uh, all the time uh, through food we eat, uh, etc. Because it's the same thing. Nature has these preferred um, isotopes for each element, but there are generally trace elements, trace isotopes uh, for each element, like potassium, et cetera, uh, which also have trace radioactivity. Uh, this is not, I certainly don't mean this in any alarming sense, it's, it's part of the natural environment. The issue with nuclear energy or other kinds of nuclear activities is uh, uh, you know, not having, first of all, excessive radiation, uh, not having uh, isotopes or elements that can go to certain organs, for example, um, and be radioactive, and then, of course, attack those organs or, the, or, or those or, or, the, or the bones. May I may just note, Nancy, ask you that one one of the things is that, of course, we've uh, discussed uh, a lot about radioactivity and uh, and and quite appropriately and its uh, its its dangers and concerns. Uh, the need for extremely uh, good containment uh, as one uh, runs a nuclear power plant or as one deals with waste. But I, I would like to just inject that, of course, uh, there are also the benefit side in terms of uh, uh, nuclear energy, and that's where the balance has to be drawn in society. Uh, in the United States, I would just note that we have 20% uh, of our electricity from nuclear power, in Western Europe, it's, it's even higher, more, uh, more than 30%. Uh, it's also electricity that uh, does not yield significant emissions into the atmosphere, pollutants or carbon dioxide, which is a great concern in terms of global warming and, and, and climate change. And so for society, the real issue is balancing the different kinds of risks associated with different forms of energy production uh, I'm neither. I, could, I consider myself neither an advocate nor 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 an opponent of of nuclear power or any other uh, 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 energy energy source. It's a question of balancing uh, our energy goals, our environmental goals, our national security goals, uh, etc. I myself could live without a lot of the energy uses or the or the uses that we put energy mm -hmm. to. I should say today. Of course, we do need heat. And I was talking about. Uh, using a lot of energy, for example, to uh, cool uh, cool a high-rise building in summer, and, and yes, and um, it's very clear that the highest priority in uh, in developing the energy and uh, energy energy technology, for example, is is efficiency, uh, doing <coughs> as much as you want to do with less energy. Uh, now, we can discuss, and different people will have different views as to what they want to do, air conditioning or not, large car, small car. No uh, car. Cetera, no car, public transport. Pub trains. Exactly. But, uh, but frankly, uh, certainly from a government policy maker perspective, 
uh, one has to understand, you know, clearly what the general population uh, wants, and not, not only in this country, but in the world. Uh, and uh, the fact is that there has been and remains uh, a very strong correlation between economic activity and uh, energy use. We are making gains. In fact, um, from the middle 70s to the middle 80s, in the United States, there was actually a 30% gain in the amount of energy required for a unit of, of uh, economic activity, a very, very major uh, gain. That was a period when there was a lot more small cars coming in and a variety of, and also restructuring of industry, uh, et cetera. Uh, unfortunately, the last decade, we've had more modest gains, gains, but more modest, about just over 1% per year. Uh, but there's so much more we could do. Uh, you're, you're talking about air conditioning and high rises, et cetera. We, could, we have technologies available for smart buildings that would be much, much more energy efficient. Uh, but we have not had the uh, instruments to really introduce those on, on a large scale yet. What's the instrument? Well, the question would be uh, uh, twofold. One is that the building industry is very fragmented. It's a lot of small builders who generally don't have uh, knowledge of and access to the most advanced technology. But secondly, is a question of does the government wish to uh, basically condition the marketplace with incentives of various kinds uh, to introduce new technologies. That's always a big political fight uh, with some successes and some losses. Uh, for example, one, one area, it's, it is in the building, but right now uh, both parties have supported uh, some uh, uh, tax credits, for example, for renewable power sources. Wind has a two cent per kilowatt hour, for example, right now uh, subsidy, and it's growing rapidly. That's an example of a completely emission-free uh, technology. Uh, just quickly, back to the question I asked before about the energy in the body. Is that mostly um, chemical processes that generate heat? Is that what makes the body? What is the energy yes, in the all, body? Is it a heat heat that it's makes all, it? It's all chemical processes, which that, obviously develop, makes heat. Because that makes heat. A, we have a temperature. <laughs> and that's how we right. go. We're kind of right. like little furnaces in yes. a way. That's okay. Right. Now, um, what does this radioactive energy or these materials that are radioactive emitting this energy, what do they do to biological tissue? Well, they emit particles, and as such, they can uh, destroy cells. Uh, Kill them? You mean can, sure, just certainly uh, outright right. just quit? In, in fact, that's of course what we do intentionally in treating, say, a cancer tumor. Mm -hmm. We introduce radiation mm -hmm. uh, in various ways. Mm -hmm. um, X-rays or uh, or things you inject into the body and the tumor, uh, so that they will destroy those cells. So I mean that's I mean, so radiation will emit a particle, uh, and uh, it will uh, typically destroy destroy some cells. All right. In what sense does radiation then cause cancer by causing processes within the nucleus to go haywire to not be? To be abnormal? Yes, again, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a doctor. You're not so a bio... Go, I can't go into detail. You're not a biophysicist. But that's, but that's the idea, that, that certainly the, the, in, in destroying cells, uh, you have the potential for, for creating a cancer. In destroying the cells, mm -hmm. not just in making them malfunction? Or malfunction. You, sort of, what's yeah. the difference between making them malfunction yeah. again, or... Again, we're, we're, we're going, we're going to, okay. into physiology that is not my... Okay. Uh, not my uh, specialty. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now, there are many... Um, many kinds of radiation besides nuclear power and x-rays like um, irradiating uh, fruits and meats. Mm -hmm. Are you familiar with that yes, at all? Well, that's, that's typically with, with x-rays. With x-rays. To, to kill bacteria. And what are x-rays? How, how, how are x-rays made? Uh, x-rays are basically form, a form of light. Uh, it's just that the, uh, the light that we see here, the, that, uh, that we, we respond to, is light with a a certain wavelength. Uh, that wavelength is um, oh, it's several thousand. Uh, it's, it's around uh, one ten thousandth of a meter. Let's say is the wavelength of the light that that we are we are seeing. Uh, X rays is it's light, 
but the wavelength is much, much, much shorter, uh, enormously shorter, by thousands to, to millions of times uh, uh, shorter. And what that translates into is light that is much more energetic. And so an X-ray uh, striking an atom uh, in your body can pull the atom apart, basically. It can make electrons get shut out. Mm -hmm. Is it much more energetic because it's such a short wave? No, no. Yes, it is. It's it's a, it's a direct direct correlation. The short, the small wavelength, and the uh, so and like the, all the uh, power is compressed or or yes. You might want to think of it the following way: the way you generate light, whether it's visible light or X rays, is roughly speaking by shaking a charged particle, like an electron. If you shake it, you emit light. And to and all light travels at the same speed, the speed of light. And so consequently, if you want to get very, very short wavelengths, like X-rays, you must shake the charge very, very violently. That's associated with the need for higher, uh, higher energy. Now tell us once again what energy is, because we see that light is energy. We see that there are elements that are sitting there with potential energy, just unstable right. elements. Exactly. Um, heat is energy. Could you, could you re-explain to us what energy is? Uh, I also I'm going to say something else. If you, if you lift, lift something, yes. you have, again, potential, potential energy, energy. Because when you drop it, it will acquire uh, energy of, of, of motion. So, uh, uh, in other words, movement is, is an energy, or is yes, it? Yes, uh, a body in motion is, is, is carrying, is carrying is, energy. Mm -hmm. uh, it, because all of these forms of energy can be, in one way or another, transformed into other forms of, 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 uh, of energy. Uh, and, and energy is that characteristic of uh, these systems that allows you to extract and do work to move something, for example, that's, that's work. By translating, in that case, energy from your body that was mechanical, converting it into a mechanical mechanical motion. I said, I said solar cells is an example of taking energy from light and just transforming it through a physical interaction with the atoms of the material into electrons. These are all different ways of transforming energy. When you lift, when you lift the, the weight, you are taking, you are using your body's energy to make, to put the potential energy into that mass, and when you drop it, the energy is restored. But some, and some kinds of energy are harmful. Is it by nature, for example, with radioactive energy because it is so powerful, or? Well, as I said, the, uh, it depends upon the Or is the it just the kind, yeah. It's upon the context, because again, presumably we think it's beneficial when we are generating it to treat uh, a patient in the hospital. But uh, what we don't want to do is to have uh, large doses of radiation, uh, I mean, if we are healthy, uh, uh, let's say, on, on, uh, on various organs, uh, because that then can lead to processes transmutations that uh, that can lead to, uh, to to cancer. But like radioactive energy, not that it can be equated with light energy, although in physics I'm sure people try to do that, right? So well, again, x-rays, mm -hmm. uh, uh, x-rays you would normally think of as a form of radiation, even though it's light. But the difference is that visible light does not have the energy to really change an atom in the way that x-rays do. X-rays have enough energy to blow electrons out of the out, out of the uh, out of the atom, the whereas visible light has too low an energy, so it, it does not have that. And radio capacity. radiation radiation energy. So X rays, which we would often which we would generally classify as a form of radiation, radiation. has the energy. And as do all other radiation. Uh, as does typically other forms of radiation like electrons that are emitted from some elements, uh, or helium nuclei, I mentioned earlier, are a form of radiation. Uh, and uh, when they collide, when a helium nucleus is emitted 
as radioactivity and it collides with another nucleus in an atom, it will, it will often um, displace it or break it up. Okay. And that's the process of potentially, potentially doing damage in your, in your body. And, and what about um, the, the uh, microwave energy? I guess it is in a, in a cellular phone. What kind of energy, where does that fit in? Well, that's, uh, that's uh, extremely uh, low energy, much, much lower than, than visible light that, we, that we, we see here. And, and would it be a radioactive? Uh, no, 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 it would not, not a, be, not be uh, You said it's a light. Very, very low, uh, very, very low energy. It, it can, it, it, it's, it's not light. light. It's not light. It's a form of light. It's yes. a form of light. Yes, 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 it is. So microwaves are a form of light? Yes. When we but cook something in a microwave, that's a... Exactly. It's mm -hmm. just, it's just the wavelength, again, is it's very, so very different. small. Mm -hmm. No, it's so long. The energy in a microwave is long. Yes, yeah, the energy is very small. The wavelength is very long. I mean, very long compared to visible light or to X-rays. As I said, visible light, the, the wavelength is is maybe a ten thousandth uh, of a centimeter. In microwaves, we may be talking several centimeters wavelength, three centimeters, ten centimeters. So then, how does it have the capacity to um, to uh I guess it makes the molecules. Well, again, again, we're, we're dealing now with not my area of expertise, but the but basically it acts on the water in the uh, in the. Uh, mm -hmm. in the Even though it's a low energy. Yes. With a long wavelength. Yes. Okay. Uh, all right, we're going to be coming to a close pretty soon. Um, I know. You've, as I said before, Dr. Moniz has, has worked in Washington, D.C. during the Clinton administration as Undersecretary for the Department of Energy and uh, also as the Associate Director of the um, Office of uh, Policy on Science and Technology. So uh, maybe you want to say a few words about what a dirty bomb is and um, what are the issues of... Uh, containing radioactive waste and uh, uh, keeping uh, the, more, the more desired kinds of radio radioactive materials um, safe, so to speak. Well, that's quite a set, quite a set, a set of questions. It's for five minutes, exactly. Uh, the, uh, uh, if I start with the first, uh, the dirty bomb question, uh, that's obviously an issue of much, uh, much in the news these days uh, in the post um, uh, uh, World Trade Center uh, environment. The issue there is that uh, a terrorist getting hold of radioactive materials could put them into a normal bomb, dynamite, let's say, and just explode it, distribute it over a large area, and contaminate uh, the area uh, uh, badly. Uh, that connects to the nuclear power issue in the sense that uh, it perhaps has raised the stakes for protecting uh, uh, nuclear plants uh, and nuclear waste so that, so, that, so that the materials could not be used uh, as a dirty bomb. So that there's, there's a security issue uh, there which is being, uh, being addressed. Uh, the uh, issue of containing the wastes, uh, second question, is a very difficult one. There is, uh, there is currently a very, very large project been going on for over 10 years in Nevada. It's called the Yucca Mountain Project, uh, in which uh, many tunnels have been uh, excavated uh, as a potential home for nuclear waste for 10,000 years. Uh, right now, the situation is that there's a lot of science going on, uh, measurements. There have been very, very careful designs of casks to contain uh, the, the materials. Uh, and uh, the expectation is that uh, the Department of Energy will soon propose this site uh, to be licensed uh, to, uh, uh, as a long-term home for nuclear waste. But it's very much, uh, I would say, still an open question. It is, and unfortunately we're running out of time. We weren't able to say that, uh, uh, we weren't able to talk about half-lives and why this waste, besides that it is so, uh, harm potentially harmful to people. Why, why besides in and of itself, it, it's a storage issue and all that, or, or a containment issue. So.
so we haven't had time to say that, talk about that. But, um, but right now, the way we have radioactive material, um, it's, we do not have proper, proper ways to contain it. It's, it's not something that, that really is, is, is a safe matter. Well, we should clarify the issue here to understand that uh, the material is, is, is currently stored Mm -hmm. uh, typically at nuclear power plants in these pools, for example, uh, it is safe. Uh, there, is, uh, there is no uh, evident danger uh, to the public uh, at all, uh, except possibly for this terrorist question. Uh, the real issue is not protecting it safely now. The issue is, can we devise a method using geological, deep geological uh, repositories that will convin convince us that we have a way to contain this waste for many, many generations to come. That's really the challenge. It is not an, a direct safety issue today, apart from this new concern about terrorist access to, uh, to materials. Well, I think people are still debating, though, what will, what will hold it forever. And since we don't have a way to hold it forever, in that sense, it's, it's not safe. And it's also not safe in the sense that we we have these areas that aren't cleaned up that are infiltrated with this kind of material, you know, for better. Well, those are, again, two different issues. Uh, the, the, um, I think you're referring to the uh, terrible mess uh, made in the Cold War uh, in the military uh, production uh, areas. And uh, this is indeed a, a terrible uh, mess. Uh, current expectations are that it will take 50 years and probably $300 billion to, uh, to clean it up. Uh, but that should not be really confused with the nuclear power uh, plants that certainly have not created uh, those kinds of, 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 of a mess. Uh, as I say, and I think it's important people understand, there is no imminent safety issue uh, uh, with the with the spent fuel, but you are also correct that we do not have uh, at this stage a solution to the long-term uh, isolation. Well, uh, I'd just like to say that pr from my personal point of view, I'd just rather have a, a natural environment where we don't go digging too much and, and needing to make repositories and have to contain such basically uh, toxic toxic substances. That would be my, it would be totally different, you know, uh, than... I, I, think, I think we all would prefer you know, uh, to that's have... That's just what uh, I... We all would prefer I'd to have energy, uh, for example, that could drive our economic needs, uh, but uh, without creating uh, environmental problems. Uh, the, uh, in the nuclear case, as I say, we have a waste problem uh, that has not been uh, uh, certainly satisfactorily resolved to date. But on the other hand, I think it's important that we always maintain uh, a balanced perspective so that we can make the proper choices as a society eventually. The nuclear power's advantage environmentally is the lack of atmospheric emissions. And I personally think um, that we as, we as a society, a global society, have got to pay a lot more serious attention to the question of greenhouse gas emissions uh, and, and the potential of climate change. This is a uh, lurking, enormous issue. Uh, I am not advocating nuclear power as the solution, but I am advocating the fact that it is a scientific fact that in contrast to fossil fuel use, it does not lead to such emissions, uh, and so I believe should be maintained in the mix as we look forward uh, to what should be our energy energy system in 20, 30, 40 years uh, down the road. Okay. Well, in in uh, in deference to you as my guest, I'm going to let you have the last word. <laughs> and I thank you so very much for being here and tackling yeah, such a difficult subject. And I hope we got a little illuminated and irradiated uh, by this discussion. Thank you very much, Dr. Moniz. Very good. My pleasure. <laughs>